How's it going? This video is going to be on understanding psychiatric drugs better, and in this video I'm going to be going over the concept of sequential binding. And sequential binding is a concept that will help you understand psychiatric drugs and dosing a lot better, but it's not one that's talked about a ton in psychiatry. And I think Seroquel is a good drug to use to understand this concept because Seroquel has different indications at different dosages, and when you understand sequential binding, you'll understand intuitively why different dosages have different indications. But most importantly, I think after watching this video, you'll have a much more intuitive grasp on how psychiatric drugs work. So let's get to it. So psychiatric medications are often represented by this gigantic ball that just kind of hits a ton of different receptors. And I think this is a really bad way to visualize the drug because viewing the drug this way makes our brains think that it's going to hit all these receptors equally. And we're taught that antipsychotics are D2 blockers and that the second gen antipsychotics have some serotonin activity and that the side effects occur because these drugs just hit other vague receptors or have some weird mechanism. And I think this is a bad way to think of these drugs because a subtle point that I want to emphasize is that antipsychotics aren't D2 blockers that also just happen to hit other receptors. I think a better way to think of these drugs so that you have a more intuitive grasp on how they work is that these drugs hit a bunch of receptors and then we dose them so that they hit D2. And side effects aren't just this magical property that emerges from the drug, but are the direct result of these drugs' receptor profiles. And a common thing that I hear people say is that, you know, we're not using Seroquel and antipsychotic dose when people use it at low doses, but I don't think that providers have a good grasp on what that means and why that is. And I think the concept that certain doses work better for certain indications applies to almost every single drug that we use, and most people don't appreciate that. So to better understand this concept, I want you to think of a hypothetical scenario. What if we were to give someone a single molecule of Seroquel? What would happen? So we know when we give Seroquel, a drug like Seroquel has a signature set of what we call binding affinities. And this is just a fancy word that means that drugs have different levels of attractions to different receptors. So if you were to give one molecule of Seroquel, even though it has a bunch of attractions to a bunch of different receptors, it's only going to go to one receptor. And the receptor that it's going to go to is almost certainly going to be the receptor that it has the most attraction to. So for Seroquel, if you were to give just one molecule, it would be going to the histamine receptor because that's the receptor that it has the most attraction to. And the reason why it's important to think of this is because if you give a limited number of Seroquel, it's not going to be going to every single receptor. In this scenario where we give one Seroquel, there's literally no activity at the other receptors. There's only activity at the histamine receptor. So to call one molecule of Seroquel an antipsychotic is a misnomer because it's literally not touching the D2 receptor. And it's also important to recognize that one molecule of Seroquel is also not touching the receptors that have any antidepressant activity. And that's because you need to give enough molecules of Seroquel that it hits the receptors that are involved in that indication. So now I want you to think of what would happen if we were to give, say, 10 molecules of Seroquel or 100 molecules of Seroquel. So I'll create a super simplified picture so you can get a little picture in your brain of what goes on. So let's say that we give six molecules of Seroquel. Where are these little molecules going to go? What receptors are they going to go to? Well, now we know it's not going to distribute equally to all the different receptors. So the first receptors that it's going to go to are the receptors that it has the highest affinity for. So in this scenario, it's going to go to the histamine receptors. So again, it still has no antidepressant activity. It's got no antipsychotic activity. It's only acting on histamine. And it's not until the histamine receptors are filled that the Seroquel is going to go and act on another receptor class. So after the six molecules of Seroquel all fill the histamine receptors, it's the seventh molecule of Seroquel that's going to hit the next receptor class, which is the alpha-1 receptor. And it's important to point out that even though we moved on to the next receptor class, there's still absolutely no antipsychotic activity. There's still no antidepressant activity. So that brings me to the most important concept in this video, and that's paying attention to the receptors that the medications hit in terms of dosages. And one little caveat I want to make is that I'm oversimplifying here. It's not that the drug completely fills one receptor class and then moves on to the next receptor class. It depends on how close the binding affinities are as to when it's going to move on to the next class. And it's probably best to think of it as like an equilibrium point as to when it moves on to the next receptor class. But for here, I'm just simplifying to think of it as hitting all of one receptor and then moving on to the next one. So let's go back to the picture from earlier that showed the receptor profile of Seroquel. So I want you to pay attention to the idea that when you see these receptor profiles, it should really be viewed from left to right. So 
you may have initially viewed it as, oh, it hits a ton of the receptors on the left and just a little bit of the receptors on the right. So maybe you thought it hits a ton of the left guys, which is like it hits a ton of H1 and A1, and then it only hits a little bit of the guys on the right. So here we see 5-HT10 and alpha something, M something, 5-HT6, whatever the hell that is. But I hope now that you can see it's not that it hits a lot of the guys on the left and a little bit on the right, it's actually that it moves sequentially from left to right based on the dosages. And in our little scenario of only giving 100 molecules of Seroquel, it literally is not hitting the guys with the one plus sign whatsoever. It's only touching the receptors on the left side. So this brings me to the visual that I think better represents drugs. So without further ado, I introduce Seroquel Fountain. So I think a fountain gives you a great visual that when you give a limited number of a drug, it's not going to hit all the receptors equally. It's going to move from one receptor to the next once the previous receptor is occupied and filled. So for Seroquel, it's going to hit the receptor it has the highest affinity for, so that's H1, and it's not until that receptor is fully occupied that it's going to move on to the next receptor, which is the alpha 1, and it's not until that's filled until it moves on to the next receptor, and so on. And the thing that's really important to emphasize is that the antipsychotic activity, which occurs with the blockage of the D2 receptor, doesn't happen until a certain amount of milligrams of Seroquel is given. And the reason why it's important to recognize this is that how a drug acts at a lower dose really tells us nothing about how it's going to act at a higher dose. And that's because at the higher doses, it's literally a completely different drug because it's acting on completely different receptors. So you should recognize that higher doses of Seroquel aren't just more potent versions of lower doses of Seroquel. They're literally a completely different drug. So let's look at what Seroquel Fountain looks like when we give a big dose of Seroquel so that it hits all the receptors, including the D2. And you should be paying attention that it goes sequentially. If we give low doses, it's indicated as a sedative, and that's because we're hitting the receptors involved in sedation. So it's hitting the antihistamine, alpha-1, muscarinic receptors. And then as we give higher and higher doses, like around 150 milligrams, that's when we hit the receptors that are more involved in mood. So that's when you get the receptors involved in antidepression and antimania, and that's because it's hitting the receptors involved in those areas. So at 150 milligrams, we're hitting the serotonin receptors, we're blocking net, and then it's not until around 300 milligrams that we start hitting the D2 receptors, and that's why at this dosage it starts becoming more effective as an antipsychotic. And the point is that that's because at this point all the previous receptors are filled and finally it's hitting the receptors involved in psychosis. And as I was saying earlier, one receptor class doesn't need to be entirely filled for it to move to the next receptor. So I like to imagine little holes in the fountain tiers, so this way you can picture a little bit of the drug goes to the next tier even before that receptor tier is filled. So now I hope you have a better grasp on the theoretical basis for the sentence of we're not dosed at an antipsychotic dose. And I hope you see that if you're at 200 milligrams of Seroquel and you haven't touched their psychotic symptoms, that doesn't mean that you necessarily have to switch medications yet, it just means that you're not yet dosed at the receptors that affect psychosis. So maybe you just need to increase the dose that you're hitting the D2 receptors. So now I think it should be more intuitive as to how you dose Seroquel depending on the thing that you're trying to treat and as to why it has different indications but only at different dosages. So now I think you should be able to better recognize as to how to use Seroquel. So if you're only using 200 milligrams, you should recognize that you're probably not yet helping with the antipsychotic effects. So you would expect a dose increase to be effective for treating psychosis. And then on the flip side, let's say you're using Seroquel to treat depression. If you're already at a really high dose, you should recognize that, hey, moving to 800 milligrams doesn't make sense because you're adding to a receptor that's not involved in depression. So when you get to the really high dosages and you're treating it for something like mood, you should recognize that you're not treating the thing that you're trying to treat. And I just want to emphasize that this concept applies to so many of the psychiatric drugs that we use. So just as an example for like the SNRI class of drugs. So for this class of medications, you should picture a two-tiered fountain that hits CERT first and then NET. And you should recognize that at low doses, it's only hitting CERT. So at low doses, SNRIs really are just like SSRIs. And it's only at a certain milligrams of the drug that you finally move on to activate the NET receptor. And this concept is just so important for so many of the different classes of medications that we use that I think it should be better recognized.